Assalamu alaikum. Today we will continue our lectures in GIP diseases and especially in diseases of the small intestine. We remember the previous lecture we are, we are talking about diseases of the small intestine. We take malabsorptions in the day in details. Now we will go on in diseases of the small intestine and we will discuss again diseases of the mucosa that the the remaining disease of the mucosa that we are not discussed in malabsorption and then we will go to diseases involving other layers of the small intestine our way to remembering it uh, we can divide it on the histological layer or we can take it individually and there is no difference now we will talk about a major subject uh, I, let's call it adverse food reaction why we say adverse food reaction? Because it can be divided into two parts. Uh, first, uh, allergy, food allergy, and the second is intolerance. What's the difference between allergy and intolerance? Allergy should involve allergic reaction. So which type of allergy you remember types of allergy we already discussed how you have surely taking in physiology uh, while intolerance there is no role in immune system it's intolerance to certain type of food and this can be due to chemical or pharmacological parts in this food toxins or metabolic for example secondary lactose deficiency and we will take a rapid view of Ashhar adverse food reaction, the type of intolerance, and no only more common, or lactose deficiency. Mojud at agalab populations, madrub at agalab ethnicity mojud mida, but at the white much less than the others. Then, mungkin ikun primary, mungkin ikun secondary. Shunu wal fikra mal. Na fikra mal na no bil malk mojud. Enzyme lactase. The chronic enzymes are in the intestine. A lactase. In the end, lactase is a way. It is a lactose. The mad that is lactose. It is a way to glucose or galactose. For some absorption, as well. If the lactase is not present, it is a way to get the glucose. It is a way to get the lactose. وحصل عندنا اللاكتوز انتولرانس ممكن انه هو شخص جينيا ما عنده هذا ممكن طبعا ممكن البرش بوردر انزيمز يصير يفقد اللاكتيز نتيجه مثلا انفكشن نتيجه انسولت معينه ويصير عندنا سكندري لاكتوز انتولرانس هاو تو بي دايجنوز ذير از ا هيدروجين بريث تيست فور لاكتوز وي كان اسس ذا لاكتوز ان hydrogen taken out but it can help it's not of a major role uh, usually we exclude a uh, dietary content from the uh, type of food the patient taken and there will be improvement and the nectar hcb lactose when we saw improvement in good at the lactose intolerance and this is the problem when I was in the irritable bowel disease زين شو الاعراض اللي ممكن تصير؟ الاعراض ممكن ما يحس باي اعراض، ممكن يتقبل كميات قليله من الحليب، ممكن لا تصير مثلا دياري او نوزي او بوربوريكمي، اكوردنج تو ذا ديجري اوف سيفيرتي واندفيدوال فاريشن. تريتمنت نقطع اللاكتوز وذاتس ات، اكو لاكتيز اللي هو الانزام ممكن ينأخذ يعني يشرب ملك واخذ لاكتيز وتنحل المشكله بس هاي مرة كوست يو ما تسوى. انه نصرف حرقات على مود بس اللاكتيز ديفشنسي او اللاكتوز ديفشنسي انتولرانس زين احنا مو قلنا اكو انتولرانس وقلنا اكو الرجي زين فالالرجي بيها اميون رول فخلينا نحكي على الالرجيز فود الرجيز اكو كمان فود يصير بين الرجي اكثر شيء كمان بيناتس يمكن عندنا بمجتمعاتنا اقل كلش البيناتس الرجي الايك ممكن اكثر عندنا other types of food, banana, milk, then it must come in uh, sorts of allergic foods. Why is it allergic to the disease? Because antibody mediated. Type 1, hypersensitive reaction, involve IgE antibodies. 
واكو ديلي تايب 4 ممكن السيمتومز تكون سيفير ممكن السيمتومز تكون فيري مايلد ممكن تكون كل السيفير ويصير على فلاكسس بحيث ممكن نحتاج ادرينالين كلايف سيفنج ممكن التريتمنت مالته شنو؟ اجين افويدنس اوف فود ذات كوز الرجي شلون ممكن نعرفه او نسوي له دايجنوسيس؟ صعب انه بس نقيس الاي جي اي ما رول حاليا لهالموضوع بس يسوون في شيء يسمونه دبل بلايند لا المختص يعرف الفود شنو بي ولا المريض يعرف الفود شنو بي ويحطون انواع مال الفود ويخلون المريض ياخذهم العفو اذا صارت الرجي نعرف انه هو الرجي في الموضوع بس هذا لازم مكان مستشفى وإذا صار سيفير الرجي كريشن لازم اكو واي اوف تريتنج ات او ديلينج وذ ات هذا موضوع الفود الرجي والفود انتولرانس واللي ممكن يدخل سم سورت اوف مال ابزوربشن اذا حسب الديجري طبعا يعني اذا ممكن فيري مايلد وممكن يكون سيفير اكوردنجلي ليتس جامب تو انذر سبجكت بما انه احنا وعدنا بالديزيزز اوف نيو كوزا خلينا نحكي على الانفكشنز الانفكشنز انفولفنج ذا سمول انتستين وايد رينج اوف انفكشنز سم يو ويل تيك ان انفكشنز بارت اوف بروليكشرز فور اكزامبل الترابولا دياريا جي ار بياسس امي بياسس كريبتوسبوريكيوسس all of this we will take it in detail but, but here I want to concentrate on special type of infection mycobacterium tuberculosis why? two reasons first it's endemic in our community second there is a great resemblance with the Crohn's disease some subject we will take in inflammatory bowel disease in the next lecture زين ليش تنلح على موضوع TB تفاق انه هو endemic في منطقتنا وانه يشابه كلش بكرونز disease بالبداية شلون ممكن التي في اللي هي مينلي ريسبيرتوري عندنا وتصير بالانتستين عادة عن طريق السوالوينج اوف سبيوتام سوالوينج اوف بارتيكلز اوف ذا اورجانيزم ويرز ذا بريفيرد بارت اكثر بارت اللي يصير بي وين؟ عند اليوسيكال بارت والمشكلة انه كروز ديزيز واحدة من الاماكن اللي محببة لك واحدة من المكان نفس الشيء شنو ممكن تكون السيمتومز؟ abdominal pain ممكن يصير in both fistula ممكن يصير in both ديارية أكثر ويا كرونز ديزيز but it can occur in TB تصير there is a resemblance between the two the clinical features investigations can show raised ESR more in TB طبعا إذا كان الليفر involved فممكن نلقى raised بالليفر enzymes الافضل انه ناخذ بايوسي، مشكلة هنا انه يا اما نسوي لها كلتشر which may take for 6 weeks او نسوي بي سي ار للتشيو سبيسيمين، ليش؟ لانه عادة قليل نلقى الكازيشن اللي هي كلش مميزة للتي في او الاسيد فاست باس اللاي ان اي اس كانتي. تريتمنت انتي تي في، ايفن اف ذا دايجنوستس از داوتفول ذا تشانس اوف جيفنج انتي تي في اند جيننج امبروفمنت از high in TB or mycobacterial tuberculosis infection so it should be considered this is the infectious or the part of the small intestine diseases and let's proceed to other parts and since we are talking about diseases involving in mucosa let's mention this entity protein losing enteropathy as the name suggests there is loss of a protein from intestine it is enteropathy So when to suspect when we found a patient with hypoproteinemia and low albumin and normal liver function since it's the function of the liver to manufacture albumin so when the liver is manufacturing and we are losing the protein it's lose, it's, it has been lost from either the kidneys or the GIT so the conditions that should be available it's normal liver function it's normal secretions of Albumin from kidney, there is no protein urea, but there is loss of a protein from the gastrointestinal tract. What are the causes? Resembles that of malabsorption. Uh, let's uh, divide it in such a way diseases that can cause ulceration, for example, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, tumors, lymphoma, or uh, intestinal tumors. All of these can cause ulcerations, and ulcerations lead to malabsorption and losing of protein. Diseases that can cause lymphatic obstruction, lymphangiectasia, we'll talk about it in detail later on, 
or uh, any disease that co cause lymphatic obstruction, so at secondary or uh, either secondary or primary, all of these can cause this. And uh, diseases that can prevent the mucosa from absorption of uh, protein. So you lose the protein. Malabsorption diseases all can be put here. For example, celiac, tropical sprue, whipouts, all the diseases that we are talking about in malabsorption. So what will happen? Uh, we will lose protein. So there is uh, can, the patient uh, can develop uh, hypoproteinemia, and there will be uh, ascites if the loss of severe peripheral odomen can be caused again by protein losing into your or even a pleural effusion. So how can we diagnose this? Uh, we want to assess the amount of albumin or other protein uh, to be lost in GI. So we can use a radio labeled albumin and measure the amount in fecal content. It's as simple as that. Treatment accordingly. What's the cause? We can treat it that cause. Another subject we should talk about since we are talking about mucosal diseases uh, and we mentioned it before, even though it can be not only mucosal, it's going to be mucosal, it's lymphangiectasia, absorption of the lymphatic, lymphatic drainage. What can cause it? It can be genetic lymph vessels, there's malunion then, or secondary, secondary to filariasis, secondary to lymphoma, secondary to diseases that can cause lymphatic obstruction. So uh, we are losing lymph, which contain too much protein, so we are losing protein. Here, the ascites can be of chiral nature or pleural effusion. When we don't have the disease, we will call it a chiral chiral. So we will be careful with the problems of the lymph. How can we diagnose it? We can use CT or we can use the endoscopy and taking a biopsy and uh, reviewing the abnormal results in the intestine. Uh, treatment, usually there is no repair, as you, as you can imagine. So we should use low-fat diet and give a triglyceride medium chain supplement. Now let's talk about ulcerations of the small intestine or diseases that can cause ulcerations in the small intestine. As you may know now, the most common or the most important, you can use inflammatory bowel disease here, Crohn's, celiac, uh, sorry, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Uh, one of the most common uh, competing with them, and maybe more than them, is the non steroidal anti inflammatory drug associated ulceration. Non steroidal anti inflammatory drug can cause ulcerations, can cause severe ulceration and stricture and something we call a diaphragm disease. Uh, the structure is around the gut lumen and it can cause obstruction, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. Again, tumors, lymphoma or tumor of the intestine can cause uh, the, the condition we are talking about, we are talking about ulceration in uh, small intestine, uh, some sort of infection, typhoid, urocenia, all of this can cause ulceration in the small intestine, mainly mucosal diseases. We are in the same line till now. Lastly, I would like to tell you about uh, the last disease of the mucosa we are discussing now. Uh, you remember, we talked about eosinophilic esophagitis, the same here, eosinophilic infection of the small intestine, eosinophilic gastroenteritis. Gastro, it means that it can affect the stomach enteritis, we are talking about the small intestine. Uh, here we will found colchia abdominal pain, diarrhea, uh, symptoms of malabsorption if severe. Uh, when we do uh, endoscopy and biopsy, we found infiltration of eosinophil, we may found a blood eosinophilia. Uh, raised IgE. So, why we say eosinophilic gastroenteritis? It may be a parasitic infection, eosinophilia. We exclude parasitic infection in the biopsy or in other investigations. So, it's a uh, term now it's called eosinophilic gastroenteritis. If we want to treat it, uh, food 
manipulation is not so promising, let me think of it. So we are using a steroid, prednisolone, for example, to 20 to 40 milligram per day, or sodium chromoglucate. We are dealing with something that decreases eosinophil, decreases body response, and the prognosis is usually good. Now we finished the disease of the mucosa. Let's jump to the another layer and take diseases of it. Uh, before that, I, I want to tell you about some common uh, malformation or common genetic abnormalities or structural abnormalities in the intestine. It's called Michel diverticulum. Michel's diverticulum is the most common congenital anomalies in GIT. It's usually arise from ileum, about 100 cm from the ileocecal valve, usually may reach the length of 5 cm. The problem is usually in children. Young adults may show problems against. Again, the content of nickel diverticulum, uh, mostly gastric content. So parietal cell is present and we can use this in diagnosis. In diagnosis, we do scanning and give a material that concentrates in parietal cells and it can be scanned easily. The problem that may occur from it is a range of from bleeding, intersusception, to sternal obstruction, and usually it's treated surgically. Lastly, uh, we finished the mucosal diseases. We talk about mycel diverticulum involving earlier. It's a congenital amalgam, it's plant and sac. Uh, let's jump to muscular diseases. Our it's not muscular, it can involve the muscle or nerves or another part, so we we'll call it a motility disorder of the small intestine. When we are talking about uh, motility disorder of the small intestine, the first uh, tissue we we'll think about is the muscle, yet uh, the causes of motility disorder uh, can range from muscle diseases, can, can involve a neurological diseases, whether CNS or peripheral nerves, myotary reflexes, uh, drugs or endocrine causes can cause a uh, motility disorder of the small intestine. Uh, we are talking about chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction. Chronic gives us the idea that the condition is lasts for long times, uh, can cause abdominal pain, bloating, or polygamy. Uh, any symptoms you can think of vomiting, for example, uh, constipation. Uh, we are thinking about pseudo obstruction. Pseudo means non actual, and this can hint us that an investigation we went to a barium follow through, it will follow through normally. But we can find in chest, for an abdominal x ray, we can find air fluid level. Diagnosis is somewhat uh, require a high degree of suspicion. A treatment, usually treating of underlying causes. Causes can be genetic and in families. Uh, it can be secondary. Secondary to what? To uh, muscle diseases, for example, multiple sclerosis and other diseases involving the muscles of the small intestine. Uh, neurological diseases, whether central, for example, Parkinson or myenteric uh, plexus diseases, for example, in uh, Paraneoblastic phenomena in small cell lung cancer. Or drugs, drugs, uh, opiates, or another drugs, can, any other drugs that can cause a decrement in motility of the small intestine can cause this pseudo obstruction. Again, endocrine causes, for example, hypothyroidism. So, treatment is treatment of underlying causes. This is the motility disorder of the small intestine. And since we are talking about functional uh, diseases, so I'd like to jump to the most common functional disease that involve the GIT, which is called irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel disease is one of the most common complaints you will hear about in the clinic, in the hospital, in, in the future. Uh, it's one of the functional diseases of the intestine. So, why we say functional? That's mean that we have to put the phrase in the absence of structural changes in the definition. So if we want to define irritable bowel disease, we should put this phrase in. It's a sort of abdominal pain, chronic, and alternately associated with 
defecation, abnormal defecation. And when we hear this uh, definition, uh, we can understand why Rome bacteria is very useful in diagnosis. Actually, we can diagnose abnormal irritable bowel diseases using Rome criteria confidently. Rome criteria says that there should be an abdominal pain at least for three days in the last three months and it's uh, improved with defecation with two of the phenomena. First, improvement with defecation. Uh, second, the onset associated with change in amount of defecation. Third, the onset is associated with change of form of defecation. From these three or four sentences we said, we can appreciate that irritable bowel disease is functional and there is no structural abnormality. So if there is any sign of structural abnormalities, this is an alarm sign and we should consider it to make us search for another diagnosis, maybe more risk diagnosis with more complications. What's the alarm sign? Usually, uh, irritable bowel disease is more common in female and in young female. So in, we, if we found it in an elderly man or in a man more than 50 years of age and the condition started recently, not from a long time ago, so it's an alarm sign. We said it's functional, so if there is a weight loss, we should look for another reason. If we find an external symptoms, if the patient awake from sleep, it's one of the alarm signs and make us consider another diagnosis. Again, if we found a bleeding, a bloody diary is never associated with irritable bowel disease, or uh, abnormal bleeding, colonic bleeding, or uh, abnormal presence of blood in the stool. So these are the alarm signs that make us consider different diagnosis. Uh, the physiology of irritable bowel, bowel disease involves multiple factors, psychosocial factors. It's more associated with diseases with, uh, of anxiety, depression, uh, the kind of personalities that have a very stressful way of living their life. So there is a rule in the psychosocial factors in developing for bowel disease. Again, physiological factor, there is a note that sometimes irritable bowel disease can, can be considered a serotogenic. It's associated with serotonin. We divide irritable bowel syndrome into uh, constipation predominant or the other predominant or mixed. Uh, the other predominant is associated with an increased secretion of serotonin. Constipation predominant is associated with decrease relative deficiency in serotonin. And this will improve if we give a drugs associated with serotonin, whether agonist or antagonist according to the type. So uh, physiological factors play a role in the diagnosis or in the physiology of irritable bowel disease. What factor that can play a role again? A uh, luminal factor. For example, uh, abnormal bacterial content of the intestine is associated with irritable bowel disease. And again, uh, there is a response sometimes uh, for the patient with irritable bowel disease if we uh, give them a probiotics. So this play a factor. From physiology, we can appreciate the treatment. So we said that serotonin, agonist or antagonist according to type, we said that uh, the probiotic, since there is a rule of bacteria, and we said that it's associated with depression, so an uh, antidepressant can cause a mild improvement or sometimes a moderate or even a dramatic improvement in irritable bowel disease. Uh, this is the last subject of our today's lecture. Uh, Again, you should read the PDF and concentrate on what we discussed and good luck, see you in another lecture.